hello, I don't want to be here, you don't want to be here, let's get this over with. Now let's cut right to the chase. Mental illness. It's not fun, no one wants it, and it's not romantic. Now you might be wondering why I'm telling you this. Is it pretty obvious? Well, unfortunately, no. Now you may not know it, but I suffer from mental illness on a daily basis. I've been diagnosed with multiple mental illnesses, but the two main ones that affect my life the most are my anxiety disorder and my selective mutism, which are both the reason why I prefer speaking through my characters. Now I can tell you from first-hand experience, it is not fun to have a mental illness. Like, I find myself wishing daily that I could just be normal. What I'm basically trying to say is, it's not fun to have a mental illness and you do not want a mental illness. Unfortunately, this can't get through the heads of many people. Recently, mostly young teens around my age have been romanticizing mental illness or making it seem more desirable, whichever one you want to go with. Now, this is just one example of two that I'm going to be using to show you what I mean by romanticizing mental illness or make it seem more desirable. A quick warning for any graphic content up ahead. you just saw is what you get if you type in mental illness or depression or just about AR mental illness into Tumblr. Yes, I have a Tumblr. Please don't judge me. Now, this is dangerous because it's mainly young teens around my age that use Tumblr, meaning if they see stuff like this, it's going to paint their mental illness or suicide even as something desirable or beautiful, which it's not. And as someone who has had experiences with both depression and suicide, it, it kind of makes me a little mad seeing these posts since I can confirm for myself that neither of them were beautiful. Depression's not beautiful, it's not beautiful listening to your family beg you to do something while you stay in bed until noon and lose passion and stuff you once loved. And then there's the other group, which is a little harder for me to find examples of, and that's the group that thinks mental illness is just a quirky personality trait. I myself have met people who, after finding out I have anxiety, would either be like, oh, so you're just a little shy, or would either be like, oh my god, so adorable, and it, it's not, it's not, it's not really. And this is why romanticizing mental illness can be dangerous, because if it starts painting mental illness like this, just as something that's a trend or a personality trait, people are going to start taking it a lot less seriously. Mental illnesses like depression and OCD and even anxiety can potentially ruin someone's life if they're not treated like I know for sure it has with me. And be aware, I am on medication for mainly my anxiety, I'm pretty sure, and I'm still not the best with dealing about it. What I'm basically trying to say is, portraying mental illness like this, not only is it disrespectful to people that actually are mentally ill like me, but it's also dangerous. And I have been affected by these kinds of posts. Like, there's even been someone in this school, and I'm not going to name any names, who told me in the past that being depressed is not an excuse for f for feeling awful. And that is exactly what depression makes you do. You feel awful when you have it. I'm pretty sure that posts like these, they influence them into thinking that mental health is not that big of a deal when really it is. And I know for a fact that there are multiple people watching this that think the same way about mental health. In the end, romanticizing mental illness on social media is not a good thing, so let's move on. Now, what I mean by just media in general is movies and TV shows and books, all that stuff. Now, this is a little harder for me to find examples of, 
but one of the best examples of terrible representation in the normal media is the show 13 Reasons Why. Now, not only is the show bad from a technical standpoint, but also romanticizes mental illness, just like everything else in this video. Now, I will give this show credit. The only good thing was the suicide scene in the beginning of the series. It was graphic and it was dark and pretty scary to an unsuspected viewer, which is how suicide actually is for people in real life and their families and people that were close to them. But everything after that is just, it's just terrible. I'll give you two examples here. One of which is what a character says who self-harms in the series. When someone in this show sees her scars, she says that self-harming is what you do instead of killing yourself. But there's so many things wrong with this sentence. The main one being it, it's what you do instead of killing yourself, which it's not. If you self-harm, you're pretty much just killing yourself, but more slowly and more painfully. You don't want to do it. You just don't. And another thing is the girl that commits suicide the first season. You remember her? Well, she comes back as a ghost. And there are so many things wrong with this. One, you don't get to come back until you kill yourself. That is it. And two, th this is a terrible way to represent suicide. Once you're gone, you're gone. And this, I'm pretty sure, is one of the many reasons why there have been several suicide cases similar to how she kills herself in the in the show because it's mainly young teens that watch it. Now, if you guys want a good example of representation for mental illness in the media, then I would probably say the game Night in the Woods. In the Woods follows the protagonist, May, who after dropping out of college returns to her hometown and she sees just how much has changed from her friends to the place that she once called home. The game has a few characters that do have mental illnesses, such as May, who has anxiety and possibly schizophrenia, and one of her best friends, Greg, who is bipolar. The game is an awesome way to represent mental illness since I have anxiety and I was able to relate to me on a scary level. I would recommend playing the game for yourself if you have the time, if you want to experience it for yourself. So what can we do about this? Well sadly, not much. The best we can do is ignore posts like this and movies and books like this, but sadly, that's all. The only reason posts or movies or books like this will ever stop it if we just ignore them is because the people behind them, they'll realize that they're either not getting attention or money anymore by trying to profit off of mentally ill people. But still, this is probably the only reason why these people would stop. People like this don't change and never will change. In the end, suicidal people are not angels that want to go to heaven, they're people that need serious help. And anxiety and OCD are not quirky personality traits, they're actual illnesses that could ruin someone's way of living if they're not treated. Depression and anorexia are not beautiful, they're serious illnesses that could kill if they're not treated properly, and just mental illness in general is not desirable or glamorous, just any kind of mental illness. What people need to start doing is portraying mental illness properly so that people will start seeing mentally ill people as, well, people. And it might stop this uh, honestly pretty toxic cycle and trend of romanticizing it if it gets you desirable. So anyway, thanks for listening and I'll have a much more positive video coming out soon, I promise. But still, thanks for listening and uh, I guess I'll see you soon.